Uh, he's the 1990 Wayne County Speedway track champ. I know that. Of course, John Mason, former champion of stars, Larry Moore, uh, Jack Boggs. Yeah. All right. Are you ready, my friend? Two nights in a row. We're glad you're here. The Brandon Ford Pace Truck. Fire the Nutrinac Solution Start Zone the next time around. Dalton Wilson, again, we mentioned James Ratliff, the car owner. He has won in the Lucas Oil Series as James Ratliff. We mentioned with his son, Justin, and Jason Jamison a few years ago in Portsmouth. Can Dalton Wilson get it done here tonight? Three of your, three of your top six starters, James, have never won. A Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series feature with Dalton Wilson, and as we talked about earlier, the two drivers in row three, Tyler Bruning and Cody Overton. 50 laps will be the distance, ladies and gentlemen. A $15,000 paycheck awaits the winner. The Brandon Ford Pace Truck, you see it making the hard left-hand turn into the infield. Those of you in the stands, if not already, Wes, get to grab a seat at this time. They are going to fire in the Nutrinac Solutions starting zone in turns three and four. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is your Dixie Chopper Field of Thunder. <laughs> at the end of lap number one. Wilson back in second. There's a good look at the battle for third between Ashton Winger in the 12 and the 49 of Jonathan Davenport. Two laps now going up on the scoreboard. Davenport slips to the outside, allows Bruning to get by. That's now a battle for fourth, James. What a story from last night. McCready and Davenport both were lapped. Shows you how humbling this sport is. And right now, he will lead Tim McCready lap number three off of turn four. Dalton Wilson second, Ashton Winger third. Then it's Tyler Bruning in the 16. Three laps in the books in this one. You're looking back now on the drivers running second and third again. Dalton Wilson in the 18D. Ashton Winger in the 12. This happens two full seconds behind your race leader, Tim McCready, who has set sail out front in that Donald Gina Bradshaw owned Longhorn number 39, McCready. Again, last night, James, he went a lap down yep. in the late model feature, and so did Jonathan Davenport, yep. and so did Mike Marler as well. They all went a lap down last night. Tonight, those drivers, at least early in the going, all find themselves running inside the top 10. Cody Overton, you see they're still married to that top. He'll go to the outside of Dennis Herb Jr., five in the books. It's McCready, Wilson, Winger, Bruning, Davenport, your top five. Dennis Herb Jr., Ricky Thornton Jr., is seventh. Cody Overton, Chris Madden, Mikey Marler, 10th. Then it's Bronson and Gustin, your top 12. As Overton still to that top. Coming out of turn four, they're getting on the bottom, but everywhere else, they're running all over this place. Yeah, it's really, it's, an, yeah, it's a really weird line. They're running around here right now. McCready is very, very quickly closing in on the back of the field as you look back there on uh, Cody Overton and uh, Chris Madden. Now you're looking back on Ricky Thornton Jr. and Dennis Herb Jr., those two drivers doing battle for position number six. But it's a weird line, man. They're on the high side down in turns three and four, and everyone's going to the bottom, or the high side of one and two, rather, and they're going to the bottom down in turns three and four, and now McCready has caught the tail end of the field. Yeah, McCready looking like he did at the end of last year. He's going to have to split. Now he thought better. Now he goes to the middle, right into the hole in turn one. As he goes down the back straightaway, he will clear the youngster Trey Mills into turn three. Several car lengths back is Dalton Wilson. Two seconds the last time around. Winger, Bruning, Davenport, still your top four. But McCready, remember, he went to that new car at the end of last year, and he was solid, did not make it to the final four chase. But right now, he's got a good machine, Cornette-powered. Longhorn down the back straightaway as Mills will get a slap back. Yeah, he does momentarily. A 2.3-second advantage at one time for Tim McCready has closed considerably. As you see, Dalton Wilson now closing the gap between himself and Tim McCready. That lead down to five tenths that time by. Over a second to cut down as they come out of turn number two down the back straightaway. Winger, though, is several car lengths back in third. Wilson has McCready in his sights. Dalton will go to the bottom. McCready through the middle here. At all tech out of turn four as they work traffic down the main straightaway. It's still Tim McCready's led from the start. 11 laps scored here tonight. Yeah, Tim McCready now front. Again, Dalton Wilson second. There's your leaders trying to work their way around. Lap traffic on the high side down the back straightaway. Now Dalton Wilson 
going to go low is this time by James. 12 laps complete. There's your leader, Tim McCready, in the 39. Second, again, Dalton Wilson in the 18D. Third is the 12 of Ashton Winger. There's a look at Winger. Fourth is the 16 of Tyler Bruning. He's just behind him. And rounding out the top five is the 49 of Jonathan Davenport. Uh, it was the last time by. Instead, this time by, it's going to be the 20 RT of Ricky Thornton Jr. Then it'll be Jonathan Davenport in the 49, the 28 of Dennis Earn Jr., the 97 of Cody Overton, the 157 of Mike Marler, and Chris Madden currently rounds out the top 10. Tyler, we're going to take a provision on early Todd Steel Building's hard charger candidate, DJ, 24 to 14th right now in the first 14 laps. Yeah, Tyler Herb certainly on the move in that best performance motorsports number one. You're not missing anything at the front of the field. Tim McCready has actually stretched his advantage back out to a full two seconds over Dalton Wilson the last time by. This time by, Tim McCready is able to put two more tents between himself and the Fayetteville, North Carolina driver. James, 15 laps in the books, 35 to go. There's the battle there. That is Winger, Bruning, and Thornton. That is for fourth or third, fourth, and fifth right now. In Thornton started in 10th for his fourth series win of the year. And again, Tim McCready, he's turned the best lap of the race so far. He continues to show the way with 16 laps in the record books here tonight of 50 in car 39, the Paler Motorsports entry. Yeah, great battle there on your screen for position number three. Three drivers going at it. Ashton Winger has it. Tyler Bruning trying to make some hay on the bottom. The 20 RT of Ricky Thornton Jr. coming up from 10th, and they try to maneuver around the lapped car of Dylan McCowan. McCowan going to yield to the high side down in turns one and two. And now Bruning gives chase to Winger again. That is a battle for the third spot, and that happens 1.2 seconds behind your current second place car, Dalton Wilson. Again, Winger the only one on the NL tire. The uh, three as he goes into one. Everybody else on it, two, as you mentioned, down the back straightaway. Good battle there, Bruning. In the car, 16, started in fifth. Again, he was the hard charger here last night. Made a great run at Old Tech, and right now, right now in the top four, Thornton, Dennis Herb Jr., Cody Overton, Davenport, and Marler, Matt in your top ten. Gustin, Harris, Bronson, Herb, Moran, your top 15, as we will complete lap 20 this time around. It'll be 20 laps in the books this time by. Tim McCready continues to set just a torrid pace at the front of the field. He's been able to put just a little bit more of a gap between himself and Dalton Wilson. Two and a half seconds now the advantage as you look back on the battle for eighth on your screen, actually seventh on your screen. It's uh, Jonathan Davenport in seventh. Cody Overton in the 97 is right now has the eighth spot just in front of the 157 of Mike Marler. You know they're huffing and puffing these motors. They headed to turn one 900 horsepower. 21 complete, four shy of the halfway mark. It's McCready and Wilson, still the top two. Winger still third. Thornton Bruning going back and forth for fourth and fifth. Tim McCready, there you see the battle. Here comes Winger and Ricky Thornton Jr. Again, this is the sixth night of points. And starting next Thursday, another points event to where they can throw out the worst finishes, but Thornton. Down the back straightaway, he'll climb to the third spot as we work lap 23, DJ. Yeah, 23 laps in the books, 27 laps to go in this one, an RTJ. That time, you just saw him work his way momentarily around Ashton Winger. He'll now try to slice through lap traffic. Ricky Thornton Jr. trying to work his way through the field, James, as he's come from 10th up to third. But man, he is a ways behind Dalton Wilson. He is over four seconds behind the 18D of Dalton Wilson. Dalton Wilson, meanwhile, these last couple laps, as Tim McCready works through lap traffic, Wilson's been able to close a little bit of a gap. Dylan McCowan out of the party in the eight. Now he's almost a half a lap behind your leader, McCready. Last time he was six seconds behind. Dalton Wilson will check the deficit now, 1.3 seconds. So he's still there, hoping for a caution as we're halfway done here of this 50 lapper. Tim McCready, Dalton Wilson now. And whoa, here they come out of turn four. McCready might have bumped the wall. Dustin, we've got a race for the lead into turn number one. Indeed we do. Dalton Wilson has closed that gap considerably. As the Fayetteville, North Carolina driver's found a line to his liking. And he's got a couple back markers in front of himself and Tim McCready. Nobody between him and McCready again. High side down at turns one and two. They both go down to the bottom at turns three and four. Mike Marler off the pace in the 157. And the... the 
Dave Warren Power Sports caution flag will fly as Marler was slowed on the racetrack. He was able to limp it off, but man, that will spoil a fantastic battle we had up front for the lead with 26 scored, 24 to go. My, oh my. I think something really to keep in mind there is as especially down in turn number one, that hole has started to migrate from the middle all the way to the top. And these guys are running around the top. And we, I've seen a few guys hit that hole and it shoots them straight to the wall. That's going to be something to watch. And guys, when you look at the wall hole on both ends, you really can't see where it's at if you're these drivers. So it is getting uh, quite challenging for them. Tim McCready has done a great job, but Dalton Wilson starting to turn up the heat. Yeah, Dalton will be third on the restart, DJ, then Winger, Bruning, Herb, Davenport. And right now, a new contender for the Todd Steele Buildings Hard Charger, Brandon Shepard, who took a provisional, started 27th up to 16th right now. Yeah, Hudson O'Neill currently in the 19th position, so Hud's not able to come up through the field as much as he would like. Tyler Herb, uh, he's up nine spots. James, he currently runs in 15th. We'll set the field for you here best we can. Tim McCready leads. Then it's Dalton Wilson in second. Third is Ricky Thornton, Jr. Fourth is Ashton Winger, and fifth is Tyler Bruning. And Ben, it looks like uh, as we set the field, it looks like you've got more action down there in the heartbeat hot sauce hot pit is the 58 of Garrett Alberson is there. Yes, sir. Alberson's down here. They're going to go around, look at the right side of the race car. They're going to go to work on the right front of the century. All four tires up on the race car, but uh, crew leaning in to get a word with him. They may do something with the right front shock adjustment. I would imagine several of these guys are looking for a little bit more suspension help as they get off into one be as long as the track stays raceable and I think it will till uh, 10 or less laps to go it'll be Delaware double file here coming up McCready Wilson Thornton Winger Bruning Herb Davenport Overton Gustin Madden your top 10 then Harris Marler was 12th in car 157 and Moran Bronson Tyler Herb I tell you Tim McCready's been untouchable but I tell you Dalton Wilson was getting interesting there if this thing would have stayed green and now they have to deal with the 20 RT Dustin yeah and it's uh, it, you're you man you read my mind uh, yeah. you know two things here number one the 20 RT has come from uh, has come from 10th up to third and uh, he's going to be on the inside as you can see on this Delaware double file restart and I'm anxious to see if Dalton Wilson or the 20 RT is able to keep pace with the 39 now that the 39 is in clean air at the front of the field so the Dave Warren power sports caution lights have been turned off Garrett Alberson is going to pull back out on the racetrack and he just pulled out coming out of turn number four man he is going to have a long way to go they fire in the nutrient ag solutions restart zone and that's going to make things interesting because they may catch Alberson here within the first few laps of this yeah and Wilson goes right through that hole into one Wilson down the back straight away he'll retake the second spot from Thornton Bruning to fourth fifth is winger off at of turn four we complete lap 27 Tim McCready, who nearly had a half a lap lead over Ricky Thornton Jr., but Dalton Wilson was right on him, and they're going to have to recover. Dalton way up top side, down the back straightaway. Those two drivers have good hot rods. They'll close behind the 58 of Garrett Alberson. Still 22 to go this time around, Dustin. Yeah, 22 laps remaining this time by, and just as we said, uh, they are quickly closing in on the 58 and Garrett Alberson is McCready. It looks like maybe a little bit of air got spoiled on the 39. That'll allow Dalton Wilson to close back in. Meanwhile, Dennis Herb Jr. trying to work his way up through the field in the 28. Ryan Gustin doing Ryan Gustin things. Look at the Reaper on the high side down in turns three and four at the front of the field. James, once again, a battle for, not a battle for the lead, but uh, uh, Tim McCready finally works by the 58 of Garrett Alberson. Both of those cars, they've been the two best cars in this race so far, obviously, as we'll have 20 to go, 30 laps in the books. Wilson is going to have to get around Alberson right now in the one. Now Garrett will leave him plenty of room. Now it'll be the top two. Down the back straightaway. Thornton has several car lengths back. Thornton almost caught the wall in two. Tyler Bruning still fourth. Ryan Gustin is fifth. So Iowa's fourth and fifth, but New York still leads, and Tim McCready in the turn 119 to go. Ryan Gustin's got the fastest car on the track, man. He started 15th, and I tell you what, if there is any ounce of high side, the Reaper is going to find it. He's going to go to the high side down in turn number two as he tries to get around. That's a battle for fourth. Again, Gustin has come from 15th to fourth. Look at him rim ride around the top side of this racetrack. When he is able to hit his marks, man, yep. that is the fastest way to go. Ryan Gustin on the move in the 19 R. Remember one week ago at Golden Isles, I thought he was the lap down. He had made a pit stop, and right now he worked into the top seven a week ago was the Todd Steel Buildings hard charger. But Tim McCready still leading 
Wilson, they got a straightaway lead over Thornton. And there's the foot of the old man. It was close. <laughs> right into the quarter panel was Gustin. Oh, man. Brian Gustin, he'll have momentum on the outside down the back straight with that time. Couldn't even do Sports 19R. The two Hawkeye State drivers go side by side in the three as we work lap 34. It's McCready and Wilson pulling away from the field down the main straightaway. Yeah, the 20RT is not able to keep pace with them. I don't know if the 19R, if he's able to clear them, if he'll be able to keep pace with them or not. As that lead duo has stretched out to a three-second advantage over this three-car battle for the third spot, man. Again, Ryan Gustin's coming in the 19R. He's been the fastest guy. Actually, the last time by, Dalton Wilson was the fastest car on the racetrack. Yep. And there's a look at the gap, James. James, he's closed that gap back in on your leader, Tim McCready, coming around this time to 14 to go. Tail end of the field, Blair Nodorf running in 19th right now. Here comes Dalton Wilson. And off the pace is Earl Pearson Jr., the Jason Round 46. He will call it a race. 14 to go. Down the back straight away. It was six, it was eight tenths of a second. It might be a little further behind. Wilson's gonna have to work on the outside of Nodorf. He's got an opening. Oh, our first eyeball test of this weekend. And here comes Dalton Wilson as Blair, the final car on the lead lap in 20th in front of McCready. Here comes Dalton Wilson. I hope it stays green because this is going to go down to the wire. They are well ahead of Thornton, Bruning, and Gustin. Yeah, and uh, an update on the uh, 19R of Ryan Gustin. Uh, he has yielded to the insider last couple times, yielded down to the inside in turns three and four. After uh, jumping that cushion and catching a little bit of the wall, the 19R has gone back down to the bottom in turns three and four. I just don't know that there's enough left up top on the extreme high side for anyone to get a run as the 18D of Dalton Wilson clears Max Blair, and now nothing between them himself and Tim McCready in the turn number one what was it five times a year ago he was second runner up in the Lucas Oil late Mother Dirt Series trying to break through for James Ratliff out of Campbellsville Kentucky the car owner Taylor Motorsports Tim McCready 39 10 laps to go so if we have a caution we're going to go single file. McCready almost got up against the wall, and he does it. Here comes Wilson. It was seven tenths the last time around. It's going to be even closer, and they got a battle in front of him, and this is going to hurt McCready because here comes Dalton Wilson up oh. at turn four. He is there, Dustin Jaron. Dalton Wilson is there. I'm not sure that there is a more anticipated first-time victory than the 18D of Dalton Wilson, but a nice move there by Tim McCready to put Cody Overton between himself and the 18D. That was a fantastic move McCready made and now Wilson will try to maneuver around and he hooked a hole down in three and four and trouble over in turn Thornton. three and four for Thornton he's out of the race Ricky Thornton Jr. out of the race out of turn number two Wilson has got to get around Overton because they're going to be seven to go this time around Dalton Wilson cannot mess around any further with Cody Overton Cody will leave him room Wilson flying through the air and a turn four. Oh baby they both are wheeling it into one dust and seven laps to go. And Wilson is going to clear Overton maybe. Oh. oh, no. He can't clear him. Nope. He's trying to work around, and he's out of his line. He's out of the line that needs to be in, and he has lost wholesale ground on your leader, Tim McCready. McCready very smooth at the front of the field. Six laps to go, and this time by, it is now a 2.3 second advantage for the former yeah. series champ out of Watertown, New York. Unless they have a caution, it might be all she wrote. Wilson will finally clear Overton as they come out of turn four. He is driving the wheel, and he might lose the wheels the way he's <laughs> driving that baby through the holes. Five laps to go. It's 2.7 two seconds, and McCready into turn three, Tanner English. The final call in the lead lap, Tanner running in 15th as they come off at of turn four. Now he's going to pick up the tail end of the field, but he's got a pretty good advantage right now into turn number one with four laps remaining, Dustin. Absolutely. Ryan Gustin runs third, Tyler Bruning's fourth. How about Clay Harris? Clay Harris has come from 17th up to the fifth spot, James. A good run yet again. For the Jupiter, Florida driver, there's a good look at the six of Clay Harris. This time by three laps to go for Tim McCready. And again, he has now stretched out to a two and a half second cushion over Dalton Wilson. Down the back straightaway, McCready around Tanner English in the 15th place car. They'll have two laps to go. McCready back on the bottom. But Wilson is not close. Next time around, it'll be the Barrett's one lap to go. Tim McCready bouncing through the hole at turn one down the back straightaway. 
He'll go to the outside of the 49 car, Jonathan Davenport, and McCready will throw the slider in on Davenport, try to. The Barrett's one, the left could go. McCready, oh man. Tim McCready trying to hang on for one more lap again over a two second advantage over second place Dalton Wilson as he heads down the back straightaway for the final time. Cody Overton gonna pull into the pit area. Checkered flag in the air. Your Saturday night winner at All Tech Raceway is gonna be Watertown, New York's T-Mac, Tim McCready. Second will go to Dalton Wilson. Third from 15th is Ryan Gustin. Tyler Bruning finishes fourth, and Clay Harris from 17th to round out the top five. Then it's Ashton Winger sixth, Kyle Bronson seventh, Brandon Shepard from 27th to eighth, Dennis Herb Jr. ninth, and Devin Moran from 20th will round out the top 10 unofficially here this evening. And that is pending post-race inspection at the UNOH Tech area, Tim McCready unofficially a winner here for the first time in 2024. Yeah, the Coleman Farms fastest lap of the race, Tim McCready, 18.053. McCready will lead all the way. The MD3 most laps led. The lucky seventh place finisher, Willwood Brakes, will be Kyle Bronson, the Death Ridge Optician, lucky 13th, Chris Madden. And the Todd Steele Buildings Hard Charger, is that official that it was Clay Harris? We'll double check on that. No, it was Brandon Shepard. Brandon Shepard. Yes, sir who took a provisional, started in the final row, started 27th and finished eighth, DJ. Yes, he did. That's so. off to all the drivers. Man, he had a shot there, but could not get around the 97 car, and McCready made some nice moves after. I'll give him, what do you think? Slicker graphics, slickest move the race right there for Tim McCready on that move in traffic. What do you think? Absolutely. I mean, that was the winning move when he was able to uh, put Cody Overton between himself and Dalton Wilson. Uh, that was indeed... Uh, that was indeed the move that won him the race, man, because yep. Dalton Wilson was right there. And uh, again, when you, when do you get it. in lap traffic, let's do it. We'll would, make an executive decision right now. <laughs> we, have, we have that ability, <laughs> don't we? <laughs> oh, hey, uh, so again, uh, after uh, after uh, Tech is complete, after we're done with the show here tonight, uh, we will roll over, uh, we will roll southwest to Gibsonton, Florida, to East Bay Raceway Park. Uh, practice tentatively scheduled for tomorrow night, weather permitting, and then six straight nights of action at the Clay by the Bay in what will be the final Winter Nationals ever at East Bay Raceway Park. We hope you can join us. If not, though, we've got you covered. Every single lap, every single night will be live right here on MAV TV on Flow Racing, as you see McCready the there making his way. Yep, the UNOH just, uh, tech area. He's cleared uh, the droop, and uh, he'll go to the scales right now. But Dalton Wilson, Ben, he was driving. He had that car. It might have been off all, all four wheels. He was trying so hard to get by McCready. It just didn't happen, but he's got a runner-up. What was it, five times last year, runner-up? I believe so, and I tell and, you what, yeah. man, he, it, yep. it's coming. It's coming for him. I know he wanted to be tonight, and these guys all drove their hearts out. It was uh, There were several times those guys in your top five had all four wheels off the ground going after it, and maybe not the, necessarily the all-tech you always expect, but it was a cowboy up kind of race tonight, and Tim McCready gets it done. Guys, his first series win since June 30th. He won prelims on June 20th. Second, that one came at Lernerville during the Firecracker and June 30th in Muskegon. That was his only two series wins last year, and his last one tonight, his 37th career Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series win for the 2021 and 22 Series champion. And maybe this is what he needs to get things turned back around and go after a third championship. His best finish of the year so far with the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series was back on Tuesday when he was sixth at Ocala Speedway. So gaining some yeah. momentum this week as he heads right. to East Bay. You remember him last year, he went to that new car there over the last couple of months, missed the uh, final four chase there. But you, this is a kind of, you don't think of Tim McCready on, a, on elbows up, cowboy up, do you? Well, kind back of, in the day, he really back loved in these the day, kind of yeah, tracks. Right. And, and, hey, man, maybe they're coming back. And, yeah, they made some changes a little bit within that program with Paylor Motorsports. And I know, I believe, Wesley Page and Carson Ferguson and the guys, part of that Paylor family, they they helped. Uh, they lent it a hand. And we saw Tim have a lot of good runs late in the year. He got to fifth in the final Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series standings last year. And this year, hunting a championship as we wait on him in Lucas Oil Victory Lane as perhaps the third different V1 feature winner here of Winter Nationals. And as you said, tomorrow practice at East Bay if Mother Nature's a race fan. And then Monday through Saturday, the last six 
Winter Nationals. That's hard to think about down there. The Veland Winter Nationals. Abs Lucas, absolutely. Lucas.com. Absolutely, Ben. Well, McCready has cleared the UNOH Tech area. He's making his way back out on the racetrack, and he's going to take a victory lap <laughs> around All Tech Raceway before he joins you down in Lucas Oil Products Veland Victory Lane. You know we'll what's coming next? We'll send down the back straightaway. Oh, my. Don't, well, don't just, we saw what happened last yeah. night. Yeah. <laughs> just we're what gonna, I was going to say. We're going to hope the brakes are still on that 39. <laughs> he was coming strong. Hey, you know what? It's been quite the ride, and he picks up 15000 a night and 15,000 is worthy of <laughs> it's slimy down there guys he's trying to do some burnouts but it is slimy down there you go T-Mac that roof is going to take a beating Ben Shelton you know watch yeah. out for the uke tire down there holy cow he's coming in hot I might not make it to East Bay <laughs> all right race fans let him hear it Tim McCready as he pulls into Lucas Oil victory lane a VLAN feature winner and yeah, they're going to need a new, a new roof on this number 39 after tonight. I got a pretty good feeling as Lena didn't get a word with him. Wendell Durrance and the staff here from All Tech Raceway, a complete 180 on this racetrack. And if you wanted a fast racetrack, by golly, you got it tonight. Uh, these cars are going to be going through probably some new rear ends going in some race cars as we get ready for East Bay as they took a pounding, especially down there in turn one. Crown Vic features coming up next. Might put some monster truck tires on those guys. They're gonna have to cowboy up as we wait on Tim McCready to climb out of this flawless roofing mega plumbing of the Carolinas. Longhorn racer has got the Cornet engine in tonight of the number 39. Congratulations for him. We wait on him to climb out $15,000 richer after winning here tonight. The Dixie Chopper Winter Nationals presented by E3 Spark Plugs. Scott Fector down here, the crew chief on this race car. Donald Bradshaw, car owner. He and Gina Bradshaw on this Paylor Motorsports 39. And Tim's pulling off the last of his safety equipment. Jordan Lawson over there assisting him. He throws the hat on and he gets set to climb out, picking up the win. $15,000 here at All Tech Raceway. Nodding the head, his head sitting in the race car. He's going to adjust the hat, and he'll be climbing out momentarily to celebrate in Lucas Oil victory lane for the 37th time in his career. Race fans, your winner, Tim McCready. <laughs> oh, the confetti flies, and he's down here. He's got the Sunoco checkered flag. He's trying to get it. He's got it now, and there we go. <laughs> All credit to the crew as he gives him a big thumbs up. Timmy. We'll get you in front of the race car. This one's been coming for a minute, man. You got a couple of wins last year, prelims. Tonight, though, this was cowboy up. This felt like old school T-Mac. You went through the holes. They didn't slow you down. How good does it feel to be back here in Lucas Oil Victory Lane? Well, just to be, uh, it's a pleasure to be out here with these guys. Um, and, you know, you, you take it for granted and 20 years flies by, you know. So uh, I'm just happy I get to do it. I thank Donald and Gina for giving me great equipment. Uh, Scott and everybody, they built this car at Wesley Pages. It's uh, it's amazing to drive a car like this. It does what you want it to do and maneuvers great. And um, hopefully it's like I said in, at the beginning, hopefully it's just the beginning because uh, this used to be where I couldn't drive much anymore. And now I'm feeling pretty, pretty saucy out here in the rough stuff. <laughs> you were hammering the hole getting into one. Did you ever have a concern about one, maybe just leaving the ballpark or two, knocking a tire or rear end out as aggressive as it was in that corner? No, I was watching Hudson and I thought, Damn, you know, he's he's gaining on me if he hits it right, so I knew that I better never move off that cushion because uh, it just was so sticky all night. And and honestly, I just I actually eased up getting in and back my corner up a little bit and got me through the hole a little better. And uh, I always feel like somebody's right behind me the whole race. So uh, I don't usually, uh, I got 100, 100 and that's it and, and never, never anything less. So I try my best all the time out there. And I just want to thank all of our sponsors that do this. It's a, It's an amazing ride. Uh, put a lot of new guys together. Um, everything's going really well. Uh, and, I, and I said, you know, we built off Old Cala, and sometimes an eighth place finish is a, is a good run. And, and you, last night we overreacted. And uh, like I said earlier, I watched Jimmy's interview from from the other day and said he was just gonna not try to outsmart himself. And that's kind of what we did tonight. We just, uh, just, I mean, it was a small couple of changes. Obviously, the track stayed fast, and um, we're gonna be happy tonight. Donald Bradshaw's over here. He's grinning ear to ear to take he and Gina and this team. And I love how you got out and you pointed at the team to put this Paylor Motorsports team back in victory lane, 15000 as we get set for a lot of money over the next few weeks. What, what does that mean to you? Uh, it's amazing. Um, you know, Speed Weeks is tough. Uh, 
it's it's as rewarding as winning the biggest races in the country because everybody's here the equipment's fresh and you'll you'll see things in this pit area with uh extra motors getting bought and things that you just don't see throughout the country because everybody's on kill down here and uh anytime you can etch your name and, and especially for them uh you know uh, it's as you do this as much as i do and you start seeing little things you're like man i feel like this is where we need to be and it's wrong you know sometimes that that old couch is not you know the nice place to sit anymore so um we just put our heads together with everybody does this it's it's, it's an amazing deal donald and gina spearhead it and, and they're way more involved obviously now by taking soul everything and, and uh you're gonna have your bumps but um we push the rock up the hill and that's all you can do what about the marketing partners on this race car well obviously mega plumbing in the carolinas and, and all the guys on here I'm, I'm gonna forget something but baker mitchell uh armslist.com brad benton towing uh wesley page uh he's gone with us since the probably the last eight races of last year he's doing a really good job and, and all these guys like i said we got new guys um one's one's not even old enough to go out with us if we wanted to go out so uh you know and, and another one's barely 21 and, and they're as green as, as green can be but uh if you noticed when i was in the back we pitted changed tires never lost laps uh these two these two are going to be all right and, and obviously scott and jc everybody that's doing all this um it's it's not easy to and when you get off it's even harder i, I feel like tonight i probably drove a little smoother than what I drove the night before. I mean, if you watch me the night before, I was way more wore out than I am right now. So it's uh, it's about the car, and it's about following your driver, whether good or bad, he's your guy. And that's what these guys do for me, Donald Gina. No matter who it is, I'm their guy. And no matter how bad I get, they're picking me up. So um, onward and upward. Career win, 37 for T-Mac. Timmy McCready, your winner here tonight. At All Tech, Miss Gina comes in for a hug as we will catch up. Second on the Big River Steel podium tonight, Dalton Wilson in car 18. Getting a word with Jeff Gullett from Ratliff Motorsports. <sighs> I know, I know, you're shaking your head. But, buddy, I feel like tonight this says a lot about this team, this equipment, this preparation, demanding racetrack, and you come home second. But I've got to ask you, lap traffic late, how unnerving was that for you? Uh, you know, it was uh, – I had just got to Timmy there when the, the cost come out, and – the you know, lap traffic was going to maybe help me out. And then and there at the end, you know, I was with Timmy and, you know, we, uh, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know what was going on there, but lap car was racing us pretty hard. But, uh, you know, if that wouldn't have happened, I think we might could have at least made it interesting. But, um, you know, hats off to Timmy. Them guys have been busting their butts. You know, uh, my guys have been busting their butts. And, um, you know, we just, uh, we got Gullet down here this week and uh, got us together and had us a little motivational speech. So, uh, you know, thanks to him and, uh, you know, just everybody. Um, like I said, maybe we'll we'll get one next week at East Bay. Dalton, you were driving the wheels off of. You had speed to start speed weeks, and now you head into East Bay. As you get ready for these final six Lucas races down here, what what's your biggest takeaway and your biggest focus into this next week? Uh, you know, just keep building on the night. You know, we've uh, we've got speed early, and you know, the last couple of nights we've been able to, to maintain or go forward. So, uh, you know, we're just uh, building our program. Uh, a lot of things changed this winter, and. You know, like I said, we've uh, we've got great equipment, we've got great car owners, we've got great sponsors that uh, you know they give us everything we need to uh, be prepared. And you know, like I said, hopefully we can keep building on our finishes, and uh, you know, we'll just uh, keep getting that. And and I think we'll you know maybe we'll maybe we'll get to stand on top of that podium for too long. Dalton Wilson, race fans, he comes home in second, rounding out your Big River Steel podium tonight, 15th to third out of Marshalltown, Iowa, the Reaper, Ryan Gustin. And Ryan, this felt like a Ryan Gustin racetrack tonight. You were able to move forward when a lot of other guys were struggling. What, what was the biggest key for this 19 moving through the pack? Man, to be honest with you, I didn't even realize we was up that far until they, they uh, called me to droop there. But, I mean, it was uh, elbows up style type of deal, just kind of like what, what we usually run good at. So, uh it, got, it just got super rough down there on the bottom, and I, I about tipped it over there one time getting into ones. I figured I'd try to float to that middle, and there wasn't really a whole lot there. So I knew it was getting down to time to get up on the wheel, and that's what we did. And I uh, wish we would have seen a caution there at the end. Maybe we had something for him. Fast race car last night. Bad luck. Tonight you're on the podium. You head to East Bay where you got your first ever Lucas Oil win last year. New team, what's the confidence level like heading into East Bay? I mean, whenever you're on the podium, the confidence level's high for sure, and uh, I definitely love East Bay. It's uh, an elbows up, up on the wheel type of joint, too. It seems to suit us pretty well, but I need to thank all my sponsors also, Carl Chevrolet, Alan Seamless Gutters, uh, Bill Stein Shocks, uh, Swift Springs. Uh, let's see, it's been, it's been a while here. Dynamic drive lines, Jay Dickens engines ran great, Willie's carburetors. Um, 
May Properties, Murdy Farms, Interman Construction, Mel Hamilton Ford, Matman, um, Midwest Sheet Metal, uh, FK Rod and Schaefer Oil, um, Capital Signs, VP Race Fuels, uh, everybody that helps us out. Uh, my car owner, uh, Todd here, and, and Alan and Betty, and uh, everybody that, that helps this deal, my crew, just every, everybody that gets us up and down the road, family at home, can't thank everybody enough. <clears throat> Ryan Gustin paying bills, thanking the sponsors, and he rounds out the Big River Steel podium here tonight in car 19. Well, guys, two nights here at All Tech Raceway, something we haven't had the, all the time because Mother Nature hasn't always been a fan. And last night, racetrack rallied. It got slick. It was a heck of a race tonight. It was heavy to start the night. It was heavy the entire night. It was a warrior kind of night. And Tim McCready showed that, you know what, no matter what the track conditions are, he might be on track for a big season as the old T-Mac returned here tonight. He picks up 15,000. And, guys, we're going to head down to the Clay by the Bay, East Bay Raceway Park, six more races for the final V1 Winter Nationals. Ben, great job uh, here as always, my friend. Uh, fantastic working with you. And uh, James, I'll tell you what, what a difference uh, 24 hours can make. As uh, we, you know, we talked about it earlier, the 39 uh, was a lap down to the field last night. And uh, tonight he is sitting in Veland Victory Lane. Let's take a look at your super clean race recap and see how Tim McCready was able to put that Donald and Gina Bradshaw owned Paylor Motorsports entry in Lucas Oil Products Victory Lane. Isn't racing so much better when Tim McCready's at Victory Lane, Dustin? It, that pounding of the roof, man, that is, uh, that is a signature for sure. McCready got the early jump in this one, and uh, a lot of movers and shakers throughout the field as uh, Ricky Thornton Jr. was up there, and that was an extremely abbreviated, super <laughs> clean race recap. Oh, my. So McCready leads all 50 laps, and Wilson had a couple of shots at him once before a caution, and then... At the end there, could not get around the 97 car, and uh, he ends up in second. But comers and goers all night long, and uh, Ashton Winger, the only car on a three, he ends up in sixth here tonight. So, Tim McCready, congratulations to him. The 37th win of his career in the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series. That is good enough for sixth behind Scott Bloomquist, Jimmy Owens, Jonathan Davenport, Don O'Neill, and Earl Pearson, Jr., all right, well, uh, the uh, drivers now getting their picture taken there in that Big River Steel podium on the front straightaway, and that means just one more race is left here tonight, and it is the Crown 